and welcome to the featured news for 11th august 2021 my name is harsh singh and this featured news is on the application of nanotechnology in agriculture this topic becomes very important because india is trying to develop competence in more efficient and productive agriculture and this is where nanotechnology can help why nanotechnology is the application of the nanoparticles right in the field of technology for example medicine agriculture space research etc now how are nanoparticles different from the regular particles first of all a regular particle for example this pen if you can see this pen and if you if you think that this is tough enough right if this is a nanoparticle that means if the pen is broken into very very small entities as small as 10 to the power minus 9 meters so this is the size we are speaking of right now this is the size which is which cannot be seen through naked eyes right this is the size of the atomic particle of this pen and at this level the pen will have completely different features it might not be of the same color right if you integrate these particles it is not it is not necessary that this is the toughness it might be even more tougher right now it is not conducting electricity it might conduct electricity right then so we have understood that nanotechnology nanoparticles are far different from the regular particles right and this is how nanoparticles can be used to deliver inputs in agriculture to assess what is the level of production in agriculture so to understand the whole surrounding in which agriculture is happening and give inputs so that feedbacks or new inputs can be given right so there are various ways in which nanotechnology can be utilized one way discussed that we discussed yesterday was nano urea now nano urea till now how you have been using urea in the field is picking up from the sack and throwing it in the fields right so this has been less efficient because we have been throwing kilos and kilos of urea bigger particles of urea but if we have smaller particles right their surface area increases overall surface area increases their their absorption rate also increases we have to use lesser urea in this case and therefore the fertilizer farmers have to pay less right and there is increased efficiency because there is increased absorption of these particles so this is how one very good use of nano urea urea can happen in the field of agriculture right in general let me give you another example right so we are talking of the small particles carbon nano nano tubes right now this is a particle which was broken into very small size and this carbon nano tube it was found that it is conducting electricity even better than copper does right also it was stronger than steel in fact 100 times stronger than steel and even being lesser than weight lesser than a steel in weight so this is the potential that that nanotechnology has and in agriculture you can see that all the kind of inputs right so all the kind of pesticides can be delivered all the kind of fertilizers that can be delivered they can be delivered through nano mechanism as well right so pointing out where it has to be delivered there can be nano sensors which can assess the presence of any foreign particle or any particular gas or entity in the particular agricultural domain right so the nano devices can be utilized in two ways for example soil soil application or foliar application that means absorption through soil and then being delivered to the plant or direct absorption through the leaves that is called as foliar application right so these are the two important ways it can be delivered now let us see some of the important applications of nanotechnology so you can note down these keywords the first one being nano scale carriers right now these small particles these uh, nano pesticides nano fertilizers how will they be carried they will be carried through small capsule these are called as nano capsule and the outer cover be a, will be a non toxic polymer and the inner particle will be the actual delivery particle right it could be fluid as well right it can be it can be focused channelized to a particular entity where it has to be delivered right so for example cuticles now cuticles are the ones which are on the leaves of the particles which will absorb these nano particles right the second way is nano fabrication electronic devices can be made of the size of nano size right and they can actually sense they can sense the presence of ammonia nitrogen nitrogen dioxide ozone and one good example of this again is carbon nano tube so when they can sense the presence of these particles important inputs can be given to balance the concentration in in that particular soil zone right photocatalysis what is photocatalysis the photocatalysis is the initiation or continuation of a reaction in the presence of light and the presence of catalyst if nano particles are used this reaction can be initiated and accelerated so one good example is use of iron oxide and sulfide 
to remove contamination from the soil right so contamination of iron and soil and and, uh, and other contaminants heavy metals which were not being which were which could not be removed earlier they can now be removed with the use of iron oxide right nano nano particles of iron oxide right so through the use of magnetic properties so these are the kind of mechanisms that we are talking of so solid waste waste water heavy metal they can all, they can all be removed from the soil and this is how remediation that means cleaning up of the whole process, agriculture process can be done, right? So these are certain applications which are which we are discussing right now. Nano barcodes. What are nano barcodes? Just like we have unique Aadhaar cards, right? Determining who we are, that number it determines it. So these are the ID tags which can be distributed, decentralized to various places inside the particle, inside the plant particle itself. So they can be optical in nature, right? That means wherever they go, there will be light sensors. They can be graphic in nature. That means their body mechanisms be in a certain shape so that their detection is easy, right? So they can be magnetic in nature and these barcode, wherever they get delivered, they will tell the basic information about that place, right? They will also be readable. So when they tell the information about that place, right, they will also be readable. That means that information can be transmitted back to the machine. So they can assess the qualities of that particular species. For example, if a plant is getting infected, these barcodes will be able to tell, right? So the sensors placed in the barcodes will be able to tell this, right? One simple example of this is Drabot. So this is Dragon Bot. We have covered this in one of the images of the day, right? So this is a, a dragonfly, which is a bot, which is a machine. So this machine has got small sensor devices, right? Whenever there is a change in pH level of water, this uh, the the Drabot tells it the change in color of its own wings right if if there are different concentrations that it sees it starts to move in a particular direction left to right all the time or right to left in a particular time so these are called as nano sensors right application in agriculture field as well at a very small level smart dust another beautiful application as as uh, as understood these are very small dust particles and they will again have nano sensors and they'll be in the form of dust wherever they can be spread I spread it in the atmosphere and they'll be able to tell what is the humidity level at that particular place, what is the temperature and what is the presence of insects and diseases at that particular place. They will be also fed with micro electromagnetic systems, right? So you can note down these particular examples. Example of smart dust is a good one, right? Similarly, these nanomaterials can be used for livestock upkeep and various other processes that you, you can imagine in your, in your mind, right? Because we have discussed the basic ways it can be utilized. You, you can apply them to all the other fields, but these keywords are very much important. Now, the best part about them is that they are eco-friendly. As far as we have understood, they are eco-friendly and they will help in remediation, right? Bio-remediation also. So, this is one. The second one is the increase in yield. Less input has to be given and more yield, more productivity. So, this is good for the farmers, right? And the third one is that it has more economic benefits as we just discussed, right? Now, the best part is that it can, it is helping right now all of us to be able to cope with these global challenges of food production, right? Climate change. So, this is the best part about the nanotechnology. But there are certain issues involved. For example, we don't know everything about how these, uh, these small particles, these minuscule particles will behave, right? So, uh, first of all, there are assessment risks, right? This is one. The second one is human is not adequately trained to be able to handle it. What about certain contingent disasters that, that can follow? Not every experiment will lead to a productive solution, right? So these are the various concerns in, in nanotechnology. For example, it's transportation, it's toxicity, health hazard, etc. Right? Now, it's a prodigy. Nanotechnology is a prodigy. It's an it's a invention and it's a very beautiful invention in itself, right? So it can help us increase the productivity from conventional farming to this innovative technology in farming right because it is possible that we have exceeded the carrying capacity right that means the amount of productivity that we have right now can only be increased with the help of nanotechnology so it must be applied right now the government has initiated an important mission called as mission on nanotechnology science and technology right nano science and technology initiated in the year 2007 and it has also been uh, extended right now this is a mission which is uh, been developed by the Ministry of Science and Technology. However, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology is also involved because it is the one which developed the biosensors, bio right? And then we have Ministry of Agriculture also giving in various important inputs. So various ministries coordinate to be able to, to uh, be successful in the nano mission, right? After having understood some important applications and after having remembered these keywords, certain important keywords, all you can do is attend this question. 
discuss the various applications of nanotechnology in agriculture what are the potential benefits and concerns related to it right so thank you for watching the gazette